Okay, good afternoon everybody. Uh, this is our help session for the quiz. We're having a quiz tomorrow, uh, Wednesday at, at regular class time at 1045. I'll have a window for you to take it in uh, and then I'll probably give you 20 or 30 minutes depending on the difficulty of the quiz. It will be from chapter 7 and I'm only I'm limiting it to just three years so you know I take for these quizzes I take it questions from the exams from three years so that'll be spring 17 spring 18 and spring 19 but the first thing I want to show you is that this exam usually or this this chapter is usually spread over two exams so we're gonna have questions from exam three and from exam four. So first thing, just want to tell you which questions you should be looking at and be prepared to do. So let's look at the spring 17 exam three, and then I can go back and look at uh, particular questions that you might expect. <clears throat> so for our exam three, we're looking at questions 24, through the end, that's through 28. So for exam three, 24 through 28. And then for exam four on spring 17, uh, we're gonna be looking at questions one through six. By the way, think of these quizzes as a great way to practice for the exam. Uh, pre preparation for these quizzes will help you to prepare for the exam. Let's look at spring 18, exam 3. You'll be, you know, no circuits on this, uh, no magnetic fields, no reflection or refraction. That was in chap chapter 6. We're looking at 25 through the end. That's 25 through 28. And then for exam four, spring 18, there it is. Give me question one through thirteen. One through thirteen. And then finally for spring nineteen, exam three. Oh, it looks like exam three doesn't have any from spring 19, so exam four will be one through one through 12. Okay, so when we're looking at these, we can think of them as having the different mirrors and the different lenses, and the two are very similar. So each of these will have questions regarding to lenses and mirrors. So for mirrors, we have concave mirrors, and then we have convex mirrors. Concave mirrors, they cave in. Oh, that's sorry, that's convex. And convex mirrors, they sort of bow out. Concave mirrors, your, your object is over here. You don't see concave mirrors very often. I have one in the lab. And then convex mirrors, the object is over here. Uh, convex mirrors are easy. The type of image that they form is always smaller than the object, is always upright, and is always virtual. So smaller, upright, and virtual. You'll need to know what type of images are formed by the various mirrors and lenses. It'll help you in a variety of ways to know the different types of images that are formed by the mirrors and lenses. A convex mirror is like a like a security mirror, and so you, you know what a security mirror looks like. It always produces images that are upright and virtual. Concave mirrors, on the other hand, have three different scenarios. I can be outside of the focal point, I can be at the focal point, or I can be inside of the focal point. And in this case, if uh, the images, I'll draw the images in red, the images are going to be different in each case. For this one, the image will look like that. That is a real, inverted, and um, maybe bigger or smaller the same size, but it's a real inverted image. This produces no image at all. We did this in the notes. And then this produces a virtual, upright, 
Virtual images, by the way, are always upright. Virtual images are always upright. Because if you think about the magnification equation, m is equal to minus q over p, uh, if, if an object is virtual, that means that q is negative. And if q is negative, because I have this negative sign here, that means that the magnification is going to be positive. So virtual images, rather for lenses or mirrors, are always upright. So virtual, upright, and bigger. So my image here is going to look like this. Uh, this scenario right here, where the object is inside of the focal point, is like a makeup mirror or a shaving mirror, a magnifying mirror. That, that's what that mirror does. Uh, so it'll help you to know those different things. You'll also need to know um, you also need to know how to use the lens equation, 1 over f equals 1 over p plus 1 over q. We'll look at some questions like that. Make sure that you know how to use that equation. Just sort of practice with the fractions. I tend to give you easy numbers so you don't need the calculator, but of course you'll be able to use your calculator. Let's just jump right into some of these exams. So let's start with uh, spring 17, exam 3, and I'll just sort of work through some of these. Um, like let's look at number 25. This is a good example of a question where you have to use the mirror equation in order to solve this. So first of all, I'm looking for the magnification. The magnification is minus Q divided by P. And I'm given some things here. I'm given the focal length, which is 20 centimeters. Uh, however, there's something that I need to realize is that this focal length is actually negative. And the reason that I know that it's negative is because this is a security mirror. And a security mirror is always a convex mirror um, because it gives you a larger field of view. The images appear smaller than the objects, so you can just fit more images because they're smaller into that field of view. So a convex mirror has a negative focal, or is a convex mirror has a negative focal length. You can always think about focal length in this way. If my object is over here, this is like the real side of the mirror. And then this is the virtual side of the mirror. And so if my focal point is on the virtual side of the mirror, then that focal point is always going to be negative. Um, for concave mirrors, on the other hand, concave mirror looks like this. This is the real side of the mirror, and this is the virtual side of the mirror. And my focal point is over here. So a concave mirror has a positive focal point. We went over that in the notes, but it's a very important distinction. In fact, on the test, uh, many of you will make mistakes just because you get the signs wrong for the various quantities, the focal lengths, or the image distances, or the object distance. Well, the object distance is always positive. Um, so focal length is minus 20. If I stand 40 centimeters, that's the object distance, so P is equal to positive 40 centimeters. And I want to know what is the magnification. Well, I need to know Q in order to find M. So I know F and P, I can find Q. I say 1 over F, 1 over minus 20 equals 1 over 40 plus 1 over Q. And so that's... Uh, minus 2 over 40 minus 3 over 40 equals 1 over q. So q is equal to 40 divided by 3. And then um, well, q is equal to minus 40 over 3, which jives with what I know about convex mirrors. Convex mirrors always produce virtual images, so q is always negative. And so now I can put this in up here. And I say m is equal to minus minus 40 divided by 3 divided by p. p is equal to plus 40. And so that cancels and it leaves me with positive one third. But look, I didn't need to go through all that business because as soon as I read that this was a convex mirror, I know that convex mirrors produce images that are upright, that are virtual, and that are always smaller than the object. And b is the only one that gives me an upright smaller image. But you won't always be able to do that. Uh, let's look. Oh, number 27. I love these kinds of these kinds of problems because you, like I said, you really have to know the kinds of images that are being formed by the mirror or lens. And so in this case, my object is here and my image is here. And I ask, OK, well, what kind of mirror is this? Well, first of all, it's a virtual image. 
because it's on the opposite side from the object. Both concave and convex mirrors produce virtual images. But convex mirrors always produce virtual images that are smaller, so it has to be concave. Uh, number 24, let's do this one for mirrors, and then we'll move on to lenses, do some lens stuff. A mirror produces an upright image. Okay, we'll ask, what kind of mirror is it? Well, it can be any one of them. It can be a concave, convex, or a flat mirror. Uh, the object is 8 centimeters high and to the left of the mirror, and then the image is 4 centimeters high. Well, a couple things I can deduce from this. You sort of have to play some Sherlock Holmes. If it's an upright image, that means that it's virtual. And if the image is 4 centimeters high, that means that it's smaller. So I have a situation where I have an object here and I have an object here. And I know that has to be a convex mirror. Concave mirrors, the only time they produce virtual images is when they're magnifying. And so this has to be a convex mirror. So let's write down some of the things I have. First of all, the object is 8 centimeters high. That's um, not B O. Oh, H. HO is what we call that. HO, the height of the object, is 8 centimeters. And the image, HI, is 4 centimeters. So the magnification is equal to positive 1 half. HI over HO. Uh, the center of curvature of the mirror is 8 centimeters. That means that the focal length is 4 centimeters. This value divided by 2. And because I know that it has to be a convex mirror, I know that my focal length is negative. And now I want to know where is the image located. Okay, so I have two different equations. I have this equation, 1 half is equal to negative Q divided by P. And then I have this equation, 1 over negative 4 is equal to 1 over Q plus 1 over P. So um, I can solve this in a couple of ways. I'm just going to solve this equation for p. p is equal to minus 2q. And then I can take this and plug it in right here. And then I'll have an equation, minus 1 over 4 equals 1 over q plus, or rather minus, 1 over 2q. And then I can solve that now for q. You have to find a common denominator, 2 over 2q minus 1 over 2q. That's equal to 1 over 2q is equal to minus 1 over 4. So q is equal to negative 2. So it's 2 centimeters to the right of the mirror. So c is the right answer there. I know I've told you in the past that I'm not going to require you to substitution of equations or a substitution to solve a system of equations, which is what this is. But I like doing it here because I can do it in a simple way where it doesn't get too complicated. And it is a very useful skill for you to have to be able to solve a system of equations through substitution. Uh, there are a lot of instances in science when you just you have multiple equations describing situations and it's useful to be able to solve them. So you could see something like that. All right, let's look at... Uh, Exam 4. We'll look at exam 4 for uh, spring 19. Why not? So let's look at some lenses. Like, for example, your ray, ray drawing. Drawing your rays is pretty useful for being able to um, for being able to uh, to do well in these chapters because it helps you to know what kind of images are formed by what kinds of uh, of different lenses or mirrors. And so remember there are several rules. You have through the focal point and then parallel to the axis. We have parallel to the axis and then through the focal point and then you have uh, through the center of curvature. And so here, uh, if you recall, this is a convex lens where the object is inside the focal point, and this gets a little tricky. I have, this is an uh, array that goes through the focal point, and then it should go parallel to the axis. 
This is one that goes parallel to the axis, and it should go through the focal point. And then this one goes through the center of curvature. So for this one, all of the rays are correct. These are all correct. And just knowing your ray diagrams will help you with that. Your ray diagrams for both your lenses and your mirrors. Um, these are all mirrors, so let's see if I can find a lens. Um, lenses and mirrors are actually very similar in the way that you do the lens equation because it's, it's really the same equation 1 over f equals 1 over p plus 1 over q um, and then it's just a matter of you know figuring out what are these values so I, I'm not going to solve this but I'll just show you what are all the, the values for the unknown quantities object is 6 centimeters from a convex lens that's the object distance uh, the lens has a focal length of 9 centimeters and then I need to make sure this is a convex lens, which looks like this, and it has a positive focal length. So this is positive 9 centimeters. And I want to know what is Q, and I want to know what is M. And so you would find Q with this equation, you know F and P, and then you would find M minus Q over P. But let's see if we can just deduce what is going on here. I have a lens, convex lens, where the object is inside the focal length. And I want to know what is the value of the image distance and the magnification. When your object goes inside of the focal length, this acts as a magnifying glass. And so my image is going to be look like that. It will have a uh, negative. It's a virtual image, virtual, upright, and magnified image. So I can get rid of the negative magnifications here and here. I can also get rid of the positive image distance and so it has to be D. I don't even have to go through the math because I, I know that my image is going to look like this. It's going to be a virtual upright magnified image so Q must be negative and M must be bigger than 1 and M also must be positive. Uh, let's look at some others. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to this, but uh, a lot of those are still the same. So exam 3, spring 19. Had not right yet. So exam 3. Let's look at exam 4. Oh, we already did that. Exam 4, spring 17. Uh -uh, you look at something far away, then you look at something closer. What has happened to the shape of the lens? This happens in your eye. That when you look at something far away, if you imagine your eye, actually, let's just imagine it. Your eye, well, actually, it is dealing with your eye. Your eye has a set image distance. So Q for your eye is set. It's set by the diameter of your eyeball. Your eyeball doesn't actually change shape. Uh, that's different from a camera, by the way. So for a camera, if you look at something nearby or far away, the, the lens will actually move back and forth. But for your eye, your lens cannot move back and forth. Instead, your lens will change shape. Uh, so if I look at something far away, that means that the light rays are coming in parallel to one another. And so they will focus at the back of the at the back of the eyeball on the retina and the focal length is equal to the image distance. If something is closer, and let's say my focal points are here and here, let me redraw that a little bit. If I look at something that is closer, what's going to happen is my light rays will travel in like that. Uh, my focal point is actually going to be here and here and then they're traveling like this and that way the two light rays will cross at the back of the eyeball and then the image will be formed right there. So here I have a long focal length and here I have a short focal length. So what happens is with your eye, let's do it in black, I'll do it in green, is that your eye when you look at something close that the lens actually gets wider 
in the middle or fatter in the middle gets a shorter focal length and those ciliary muscles are actually pushing down on the lens to squeeze it so that it gets wider in the middle it's sort of like squeezing a marshmallow down and when you squeeze a marshmallow down it, gets, it poofs out on the side and that's what your lens does that's why it's harder for people to focus on nearby things as they get older and older because the the lens in your eye just it's not as flexible as it once was and those ciliary muscles are just getting tired and they're not able to, to flex that lens as much. Well, let's look at this. So for a concave lens, which of these is formed when an object is at a distance less than one focal length? So when you're looking at lenses and mirrors, I hope this helps. When you look at lenses and mirrors, they're very, very similar because they're both spherical objects. A concave mirror is akin to a convex lens. And a convex mirror, like a security mirror, is a lot like a concave lens. And a flat mirror, well, there is no equivalent to a flat mirror in lenses. It would just be like a sheet of glass. So a con cave lens is going to be a lot like a convex mirror. So if you go back and look at those different images that convex mirrors produce, well, they only produce one kind of image, a virtual, upright, and smaller image. So if I have a concave lens, it is always going to have a virtual, upright, and diminished image for a concave lens. And a concave lens looks like this. If I have an object over here, it's always going to produce an image that is right here. That's another difference between lenses and mirrors. Uh, let's imagine if we have a convex mirror here. If my object is here, then my image is over here. So for lenses, virtual images are on the same side as the object. But for mirrors, virtual images are on the opposite side of the object. Okay? Um, chromatic aberration, that's sort of in the, in the definition of that. Look at these rays, make sure you draw, you know your ray diagrams. Um, let's look at number seven here. This is using the lens equation. A mirror has an upright image that is one half the size of the object. What kind of mirror is that? It's upright, so it could either be concave or convex, but it's upright and it's smaller. So this has to be a convex mirror because a convex mirror is the only one that will produce an upright, smaller image. And by the way, since it's upright, that means that it's also virtual. So this is a convex mirror. The object is six meters away. And I want to know what is the focal length. I know that the magnification is positive one half. I know this is a convex mirror, so that means that the focal length better be negative. Oop, I'm going to get rid of those answers. Um, and now I want to figure out what is the focal length. So I know that 1 over f equals 1 over 6 plus 1 over q. And then I also know that 1 half is equal to negative q divided by p, divided by p. And I want to know what is the focal length. Well, um, oh look, I know what p is, so I can say that 1 over half is equal to negative q divided by 6. So that tells me that q has to be negative 3, which jives with what I think about convex mirrors, which is that they have virtual images always. And so it's a good thing that this is a negative value. So I have 1 over f equals 1 over 6 minus 1 over 3, because that's a negative image distance. q is negative. So that's uh, f is equal to negative 6. Did that right, right? Yeah, so c is the right answer. Make sure you're good at working with those fractions, okay? You can use your calculator, but I find that you'll move a lot faster if you can just find the common denominator of uh, two dissimilar fractions and, and, you know, and simplify the situation. Oh, for your i, the 
focal length can change, but for a camera, the image distance changes. That's the difference between your eye and a camera. Okay, I think we're wrapping up here pretty soon. Um, there aren't many of these that you'll see. Let's look at, if an image has a magnification of positive 2, which of these statements are correct for this image? The image is bigger than the object? That's true. Is the image virtual? Virtual images are always upright. Okay, and this is an upright image because a positive magnification is virtual. Um, I mean, it's upright. Positive magnification means that it's upright, and upright images are always virtual. And so one, two, and three, the right answer. Okay, we're starting there. Number 17 here. I think we got many of those. Uh, we didn't look at this one, but it's a lot like the other test, so I think I'm just going to let you guys, if you have any particular questions about these that you were not clear on the video, then you can you can ask me a question about that later. Okay, um, I think I'm going to stop there. Oh, short, short help session, but I think I move faster when I'm not with you guys. Uh, miss you guys. I feel like I haven't seen you in weeks. Wait, I haven't seen you in weeks, but... Uh, and we will, I'll have this quiz tomorrow. I do want to remind you that quizzes are... Uh, I take only your top three quizzes, and then I rescale that to 100 points. So if you're happy with your quizzes as they stand right now, then by all means, you don't need to worry about the quiz. But, you know, maybe you do need to worry about it. Just go ahead and take the quiz. It'll help you prepare for the exam. Although I'm dropping your lowest exam score, too. So you might even be at a point right now when well, no, you have to take the final. Don't give up yet. You want to you keep doing what you're doing. But uh, you might not need to take the quiz tomorrow. But I encourage you to do so. I won't be offended if you, you know, make a bad score on it. I'll just drop it. I won't even see it. Okay, folks. Y'all have a great day. Bye.